In this video, I'll cover the fundamentals of vertical curves and vertical alignment. Vertical curves are used to provide a smooth transition from one grade to another, similar to horizontal curves. Except in this case, we're looking at the vertical perspective. So we're looking at a profile view of our roadway. So imagine us kind of at the side of the road, and so we can see the grade coming uphill, the grade going downhill. In this case, we, that's the scenario we have. We have the entrance grade, which is known as G1, which then transitions to the vertical curve, trans, then which transitions back into the grade, the exit grade, which is G2. So we'll use that terminology, G1 and G2. When we're looking at vertical curves and vertical alignment on the x-axis, we're going to see the stationing. And this is always in horizontal distances. So we're using the distances measured horizontally to represent the distances in the vertical plane. So everything is just a horizontal distance. And that really simplifies things for vertical curves. The vertical curves I'll cover will assume will all be symmetric parabolic curves. So symmetric means that they're equal on each side of the PVI. So there's symmetry within the horizontal within the vertical curve and parabolic, meaning that the parabolic equation defines the shape of the vertical curve. On the y-axis, we'll see the elevation as we move along the grades and the vertical curves. There are two primary types of vertical curves, a crest curve, where we have that concave down shape, and then a sag curve, where we have the concave up shape. The PVI is a very important point on for vertical curves. These are where the two tangents meet or the two grades meet. So we have a G1, which is our entrance grade. We have G2, which is our exit grade. And those two grades will intersect at the PVI, the point of vertical intersection. We also have the PVC. This is the point where the curve begins, the point of vertical curvature. So leaving entrance grade, G1 and starting to curve along the vertical curve. Then we'll reach the PVT. The PVT is the point of vertical tangency. This is the point where the curve ends and we return to the exit grade or G2. We use the term X to denote any horizontal distance along the curve. So X can be as small as zero, which would align with the point of the PVC, or as long as L, which is the full length of the curve which would correspond to the PVT. And usually we're looking for the elevation of the curve at the point X. So X is typically some point of interest in the analysis. We'll use the capital letter Y for the elevation of the point along the curve that corresponds typically to our, point, to our distance X. So we have X is our horizontal distance and Y is the elevation of the point on the curve that we're interested in. Look, breaking that down a little bit more, so looking at some of these components of vertical curves, the lowercase letter y is the distance between the extension of the entrance grade, or if you're on the other side of the PVI, the exit grade, and the point on the ver vertical curve. So this is that, that distance between the tangent or the grade and the vertical curve. This is known as the tangent offset, and it's represented by the equation ax squared. The middle ordinate, m, is the distance between the vertical curve and the chord that are drawn between the PVC and the PVT. So again, the curve and the chord both tie into the PVC and PVT. And that distance, m, the middle ordinate, is taken at the midpoint of the curve, so aligned there with the PVI. And it's also true that it's going to happen at a distance L over 2. The PVI for vertical curves, when we're looking at a symmetric parabolic curve, is always halfway between the PVC and the PVT. Similar to the middle ordinate, we have the external distance E. This is the distance between the vertical curve and the PVI. And that's a common a uh, term that's denoted on vertical alignment drawings. So one of the co most common mistakes with vertical curve problems when applying the parabolic equation 
is not using the correct units. So when we're dealing with the grades, G1 and G2, those are always in percent. And we, the sign is very important. So if G1 in this case was positive 4%, any equation that asks for G1 in our parabolic formula, we need to put in positive 4. For the exit grade, so in this case maybe it's negative 3%, we'd want to make sure we always put in G2 as negative 3. So don't put those in percent form, leave them in their whole number, or, or leave them in percent, don't put them in their decimal form. Again, all those grades in percent, not in the decimal form. The distances, so X and L primarily, these are all measured in stations, where at one station equals 100 feet. So if the entire length of the curve L is 900 feet, for the equations that ask for L, you should put in 9 station, so just the number 9, not 900 feet. And so again, these are very important when we start the calculation. Again, another important assumption for symmetric parabolic curves is that the PVI is always halfway between the PVC and PVT. So using that relationship can usually help us find some missing information. So PVC plus L over 2 will get you to the PVI and then another Half of the length will take you all the way to the PVT. So generally, and mathematically, looking at the parabolic curve, you can use the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a and b are constants, and these can be positive or negative, and we'll take a look at, at how these are specified for a vertical curve. And c is the y-intercept, so this is the point where the parabola crosses the y-axis. And as you can see in this drawing, what that's going to relate to in vertical curves, the parameter C is going to tie into the elevation at the PVC, because it's going to be our starting point for establishing the elevation along the curve. So Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. This is our vertical curve equation. We're going to specify it by using the terms that are specific to a vertical curve. So for our vertical curve, the term A is G2 minus G1 over 2 times L. And again, making sure we keep the grades in that case in percent and the length L in stations. B is the entrance grade in percent. That's G1. And again, it's important to make sure if it's positive, we keep that positive. And if it's negative, we carry the negative with us. C is our PVC elevation. So that's going to set the starting point for any elevation we calculate along the curve. And usually we'll be given the PVI elevation. So if we're given the PVI, we need to start with that elevation, subtract off G1 times half the length, and that will give us the PVC elevation. And then X in this equation is the horizontal distance along the stationary axis to any point of interest on the curve. So we can find the elevation at any point along the curve, X, between 0 and L. So we can't exceed those bounds because we'd then be on the tangents or the grades that are outside the PVC and the PVT. We can also look at the equation for the external distance. Again, this is E. This is the distance between the PVI and the midpoint of the curve. At the PVI, we know that X is going to be half the length because our PVI is always bisecting the distance between the PVC and PVT. So our external distance E equals Y equals AX squared. We can plug in our term for A, G2 minus G1 over 2 times L, multiplied by L over 2 squared. We, that's our X is L over 2. Simplifying that, we get E equals A times L over 8, where A is equal to the absolute difference in grades G1 minus G2. So that's how we can, that's the equation that we can use for finding the external distance E.